Hello everyone, I am Amash and today I'm going to talk about some of the projects that I have built in the last three years. If you have any questions about these projects, you can comment them down below. Now let's get started and I hope you enjoy this video. This video is about three of the many projects I have worked on in the past years. Let's start with the earliest one and maybe the simplest one, which is this ESP32 development board. I built this to be more familiar with the ESP32 ecosystem and learn something about displays on embedded hardware. The ESP32 rover chip that's powering the system has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, and with the added buttons and the screen, this piece is great for controlling and monitoring other IoT projects. It also has a small lithium-ion battery built in, which gives it about 10 to 11 hours of runtime on a single charge with the screen on full brightness and the Wi-Fi on. As you can see in the video, it can also run simple 3D games with great performance. The demo there uses a ray casting 3D renderer that accepts textures like Wolfenstein. The next project I want to talk about is the Raspberry Pi Portable. I have always been fascinated by how small and precise portable electronics are, and seeing how popular portable gaming systems like the Steam Deck or the ROG Ally are becoming now, I know that I am not the only one that thinks that. This is obviously not my first go at this. I have an older video on this channel showing how the last one was built, but let me say this quickly. The last one was powered by a Raspberry Pi 3 and used the official display. It had speakers, a battery pack and a power management system that I thought was cool, but ultimately resulted in the demise of the battery management circuit. Sometime this year, in 2023, me and one of my friends decided to take place in a German science fair and competition called Jugendforscht. Our idea was to create a low-power parking management system for individual parking places. I decided that this idea would be best presented with another Raspberry Pi portable, since we needed to fly to Germany to present our project. I crammed everything I needed into a new 3D printed shell and wrote some software to make our idea work. But of course, since the Raspberry Pi is such a versatile single board computer, you can use it as a normal computer or you can also play retro games with it, which is the use case Raspberry Pis are most used in as far as I can see. With the new HDMI LCD, these games look great and sound great. Now I want to jump to the next project. The controller you see right now in the video is, like you probably guessed, also self-made. That controller is the one I spent the most time designing and working on. I first started this project in 2021, but my attempts to print it at that time ended in a failure. I picked up the project again next year and worked out the electronics side. As I was familiar with the ESP32, I simply used it again in this controller. It also had a bonus of giving Bluetooth connectivity to the controller. As the ESP32 didn't have enough pins, I used shift registers I had laying around to multiplex the buttons. You can see the rough positions of the boards I used here. This controller, thanks to its software, is detected like a direct input controller, which can be then forwarded to X input, which most Windows games prefer to use via controller emulation software like X360CE. Here you can see that it also works with the Pi, albeit with a bit of latency, which somehow doesn't exist with Windows. As I wrap up this video, I want to mention that a version 2 of the controller is in works, with smoother buttons and more features. Stay tuned for that. And with that out of the way, I want to say that this is it for today. See you in the next video.